I have no professional background experience in podcasting, which was difficult. Uh, I enrolled in the uh, Berkeley School of um, Advanced Media Institute to take a few uh, classes. They helped coach me up. We were, th we were lucky enough to meet with them a couple times to talk to them about what we were going to do. Uh, I've had a chance to talk to other people around the state that have had uh, some experience doing this. We've talked to people locally uh, that have run some podcasts. So um, I've tried to pass on what I know to them, which is very little at this point, but I continue to build. This year we're trying to build outward with that and have more podcasts produced in our class, not just stories, but ones that we can share later on. Well, it was an interesting conversation with uh, our career and technical education director, uh, Mr. Jake Buholtz. Um, I came to him with a couple ideas about how to do projects for social studies courses. And one of the ideas was, you know, being able to share a story with sound. And uh, he said, let me get back to you. I had a couple ideas. And it is a field that is burgeoning. And obviously, I think a lot of people started to first listen to uh, podcasts during COVID. They had a lot more downtime and a lot of time to listen to more things. Uh, and since that time, the, the market has really uh, multiplied. And with that, there's been a lot of kids who have been interested in telling stories through sound. Um, so I think that the biggest reason why we chose to do it was is because it's relevant now. Uh, it's something that kids find interest in and we can focus on uh, their stories and their voice. My project was about the green band pods that blew up in 2021. Um, basically, if you don't know our... <laughs> During COVID, we had to find creative ways to rehearse together, and um, the theater department came up with this idea to have the theater kids together recording um, in these green, like, personal changing tents that they would cut a hole out and put, like, plastic over to make windows. So our music secretary ordered a bunch, and we numbered them, and we made them. We cut out the windows, and we made them for the band, and that's how we rehearsed, because um, you can't just be spitting into your instrument and having it fly everywhere. Um, so we would play in them, we would disinfect them, let them air out for the next day so we could use them. Um, and it, it, pictures got posted to, uh, from a newspaper to Reddit, and <laughs> it blew up on Reddit. People got, r some people, a lot of people actually, got really, really pressed and mad about it and said it was child abuse. There was a a lot of nasty comments. It was all over TikTok and Instagram. It was crazy. And the whole time, we're just thinking, like, people are making this, like, a harmful thing when it was really helpful and, like, innocent. And we were having, we were so excited to be um, rehearsing together again, and it just kind of dampened the whole thing. Like, we were so upset after it. I decided to make mine on my dad he used to have a fishing boat with his with his dad out um, on the coast. And he's just, I remember just so many crazy stories he'd be telling me either about like, like getting in a wreck with another ship or like a huge storm and almost sinking. And that stuff was just so interesting to me. It's always, always has been. And I thought, you know, if I took that as a concept for a podcast, I felt like I could make it really immersive, like with a whole bunch of sounds and SFX, so that's why. I would say ours took mm, two to three weeks. We came up with the idea. We um, we didn't have much time since it was a it was really busy time for band because we had parades coming up, and parades take a lot of rehearsal time. So we were all really busy practicing. But we scripted the thing that took probably two hours in total. Um, our interviews took a little longer to set up, but we got them all. And then editing took so long, but it was it was a lot of fun editing. But. Yeah, kind of the same for me, about two to three weeks, because at the beginning of the year, he told us, like, this is what we're going to do. I have these two, like, competitions that I want you guys to make a podcast for and submit it to them. And one of them was the New York Times. So it came up, it was, was it our final? Kind of our final at the end of the year? Yeah. And... He said, this is our, your final podcast, you know, you're submit, I'm gonna be submitting all of these to the New York Times. And I thought, I think I came up with the idea of my dad's fishing boat, um, like earlier on in the year, but I wanted to wait to my final one, just because I thought it was such a cool concept. So about two to three weeks of like 
scripting to interviews, editing, and then submitting it. Well, when the kids came to me, we always have kind of a strategy session about some ideas. And sometimes kids have good ideas, other ones have a hard time finding out what they want to do. I've known Cade literally his whole life. Uh, his dad is somebody that uh, I'm very close with, and I've heard that story many times. So when Cade told me that he was going to use that as the basis for his podcast, I thought that's going to be a home run. There's so many great ways that that story could go. And he did a great job of interviewing not only his dad, but his grandfather and his uncle who all lived that life. So I knew that that's so a couple reasons. That story is just compelling, but it also was, it was made for a podcast story with so many good parts. The other part with Sophie and you know the now infamous green tent photograph that um, stirred up so much when they told me, hey, what do you think about us doing a story from what it looked like being inside the tent? I was like, that, that's gonna, I, I joked with them, I was like, you guys are gonna win this contest. It's gonna be a winner. So when they were awarded an honorable, honorable mention for that, I was not surprised. Was so, they did such a great job of interviewing all of these people that were so affected from our front desk secretary to the principal who uh, received countless calls and most of them not very nice from people that day. Um, those girls did such a great job, right? Nobody asked them once what it was like for them to be inside those tents. And everybody's narrative ran away from that. And they wanted to say, well, here's our story. Here's our voice. We actually got an honorable, an honorable mention for an NPR competition, um, but we didn't know. Um, and I didn't think we made it because I figured Harley would know and he didn't email me until like maybe a month ago, whenever he was like, oh, I just looked at this thing, congrats. <laughs> so um, I sent it to my friends and I said, look, we made it. And we were so excited. We all posted it on our Instagram stories. Everybody was so thrilled for us. It was a, it was a, it was a funny little moment. Um, I think he told my mom, because he, he got the results for the New York Times and was just scrolling through it and found my name, he told my mom, and then I think I was at my friend's house, and my mom just called me, and everybody was super excited and proud. I think when kids come to class, the first thing they think of is a podcast is just two people sitting down interviewing each other and being entertained. And that takes a skill as well. So that is not what we were doing. We wanted to try to show them the skills of telling a story. So the class itself is um, not just podcasting 101, it's intro to podcast production and audio storytelling. And that's intentional. We wanted kids to come in um, and be able to build a story that they can tell about themselves, their interests, their lives, the things that have happened uh, to them. And then also include, yeah, some interview techniques. It, it is very much a journalistic kind of approach. And then using that information, much like you're telling the story about my class, you break it up into parts, you edit it, you add sound effects, we talk about copyright, what things you can and can't legally use. Uh, we get a little bit into Foley effects where kids can create sounds to include into their podcast. So we want, we want to build from the ground. First thing, my students right now are recording themselves on, uh, on their very flimsy uh, Chromebook microphones. And we do that on purpose because we want them to hear it and think that doesn't sound great. And then we provide better tech and then editing and ways that they can layer it with music and edit out some mistakes, overlap sound and, and do those things. So we start small, record your voice, submit it, record your voice, come up with a, um, a theme, an idea for a podcast, make it up, make up your guest. My students right now are making up some uh, interviewees. Somebody's going to interview you know, Kurt Cobain and a couple other actors are being interviewed, T Timothy Chalamet by some of our girls. So. Um, they're going to pretend to build one that kind of is an intro, and then we'll go from there. It was such a new medium, a new class. I didn't really know it. I, I had knew about the New York Times uh, student podcasts and NPR student podcasts. So I thought that's a great way to start. We can use that as a way to try to build towards completing a project. Um, and those have different due dates. Our, our student organization, the TSA, has one as well. So um, we use those to kind of build our skills and the success that not only did Cade and Sophie have but other students with building that kind of sound and just because they didn't get picked by those didn't mean there was some other ones that were fantastic I'm just really happy that they had the uh, ability to um, kind of shine a light on what they did and that in turn obviously brings interest to Wenatchee High School so the hope is, is that 
we build more student interest so we can have multiple um, sections of it in the future.